What's going on guys, Rulinal here, and I'm coming back at you with yet another code commentary. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling pretty good today, um, there's been a little bit going on, but um, not too much really. Uh, I guess I guess I'll get started. Um, let's see, let's see, where, where do I start? That's always the problem. <laughs> um, I, I, got a, I got a lot that I want to talk about this video, but I mean, uh, so I'm just gonna like I'm gonna try and breeze through it, but get as much detail into it as I can. Uh, and the fact that I'm talking about doing that right now is wasting more of my time, so I should really stop talking and actually get on subject. <laughs> but uh, okay, 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 let's get started. Um, let's see. Um, check disk. Uh, the Windows the Windows utility that always checks your system whenever you whenever it thinks that the Windows operating system is dirty or something is wrong with it or a volume is corrupt and stuff like that. And the problem that I had with that the last uh, uh, a few code commentaries ago, I think I mentioned that it deleted one of the bootloaders or something that Grub needed to boot into Linux, and it did it once again. So now I have finally learned my lesson that check disk is bad for Linux. <laughs> so we're gonna cut that out of the, cut that out of the, the whole plan. Uh, I checked out. I, I googled a little. I did a little googling. I did a little research, and I guess it's like uh, Katie's Corner for XP offers some uh, registry key. Uh, modifier, the, so it'll disable the check disk utility, and that's awesome. So that way, whenever I boot into Windows, it's not gonna break Linux on me. Um, and since it did break Linux once again, I had to install it again and again and again. And um, but this time, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity for me to learn more about the different uh, distributions and uh, like flavors of Linux and stuff like that. But since I'm using Wubi and having it dual boot off Windows, so it's going to be installing Ubuntu. Um, I checked out some of the some of the options that Wubi offers. Wubi offers Kubuntu, uh, Xubuntu, and regular Ubuntu and Mythbuntu. I don't know about anything about Mythbuntu, but for people that don't know, these different these different flavors and different distributions they're they're not so much different distributions because it's really Ubuntu based off Debian and stuff like that. But I won't go into that. But the K in front of it and the X in front of it are different desktop environments because when you run regular Ubuntu, you are running GNOME, a regular regular desktop environment. It's it's pretty common and stuff like that. It's it's like average on re on system resources. And then there's KDE the K desktop environment. Um, and that runs for KUbuntu. KDE, uh, I think it's known for just being a lot more glossy, a lot more really pretty and spectacular, but that uses a ton of system resources. So I tried it, I tried it, and it actually froze my computer while it was installing. It was that bad. So I realized that, okay, maybe I can take a step down from GNOME, because uh, I mean, I'm running on a little teeny weeny netbook here. I want it to be able to run super fast, and I still want to have like I want it to look good, you know. So I checked out X Ubuntu, and X Ubuntu is apparently using the uh, the desktop environment XFCE. I don't know what that stands for. I could Google it right now, but you know, I'm kind of doing a commentary, and I don't want to do that to you guys. So, but that is apparently a lighter version of GNOME of GNOME. I don't know if you want to have the, G, the the stronger G in front of it, like a new GNOME, Jedit, G Edit, Get It. I don't even I don't even know. But other than that, that's what uh that's what X Ubuntu was. And apparently there was an even lighter version of that, a lighter version, which is um, LXDE, which is apparently like it stands for Lightweight X11 Desktop Environment. So LXDE, and that is I th I th maybe like one of the lightest. Uh, desktop environments you're gonna find. So it's it's not that harsh on system resources. And since I'm running on a netbook, that's definitely what I wanted to use. But Wubi didn't offer it. But apparently, you can be running multiple desktop environments, and you can select it when you log in. So I gave that a go, and that was pretty cool. I checked it out. Um, and yeah, I, I installed Xubuntu. I downloaded that ISO, so Wubi won't have to do it every single time. I in case Windows breaks it, but hopefully now it won't. Now that I I disabled Check Disk. But uh, yeah, that makes things a whole lot easier because now my system runs a lot faster, and man, it is so smooth. It runs like butter. <laughs> but yeah, it's Lubuntu uh, for the L for LXDE. So it's Xubuntu running Lubuntu on top of it because it's the LXDE, uh, LXDE on top of XFCE. But I went through a lot of it, and I like removed some of the XFCE programs and like shifted back and forth between... 
uh, LXD. I'm, I'm throwing around so many acronyms, I'm sorry, it's probably making your head hurt. But yeah, I got to change around some of the GNOME things that I'm used to, some things that I would get from regular Ubuntu. I got to check out like LeafPad, MousePad, and other like teeny weeny text editors that aren't as good as Jellet. Uh, oh my god, Jellet. That, that's not what I want to say. And Jedit. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying new software and getting into the whole Linux vibe. Try new things, understand it, learn it, and it's, it is. It's a good feeling. It's really cool. Other than that, because that's really what's new, but the next video that you see, I'm going to be on Linux rather than Windows that you're watching right now, because I am actually running on Windows, because this thing that I wanted to, that, I, that you're seeing is the Visual Basic Script script that I, Visual Basic Script script? Yeah, I guess I guess you could call it that, <laughs> but whatever. It's the Visual Basic script 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 script, script that um uh would loop through uh a list, a list of files inside a directory. It would find executables and then would run them. So we're since we're using password retrieval programs, we can run them all silently, and that way we don't get any errors and stuff like that. And it is just awesome. It runs beautifully, and I was really pleased with how it turned out. And you guys got a nice a nice little video to watch and something to keep you interested. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that idea because that can go into so much more related to like hacking and getting retrieving passwords all over the network because Visual Basic can run remote programs and I'm getting I'm I'm talking about this more than I should be but that's definitely something else I want to go into and I'm going to talk about that in another video but the upcoming video I want to be talking about is uh n uh naming variables in Python and that's going to be part of Linux that's going. I'm going to be doing that in Linux. But yeah, I did it in Windows because apparently, I I don't know what what would, why it wouldn't run. But when I was running inside the virtual machine under Linux, like under VirtualBox, I was running the Windows XP thing. Um, that did not run. And speaking of Windows XP, what you're watching is Windows XP. I am running Windows XP, but the theme that I'm using, I'm sure a lot of you might end up asking me, is the Brico Pack, uh, Vista Inspirat 2. So you can Google that, you can download that, and it is really fancy. You can see the docky up at the top, and it just looks good. So, yeah, ch give it a go. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, a, f a few days ago, I turned in my summer reading assignment, so that feels good, because now that I have all the weight off me, I have all the pressure off me, and it feels great that now that I can just focus dead on code, I can get the rest of my summer out of the way, because I only got, uh, I don't know how many days it is now, I think it's maybe, maybe a little bit more than a week until school starts up again, and then I'm going to be... Well, that'll get me started, too, because that way I'll be testing SQL injection and, <laughs> and playing around on NetBIOS shares, but that's a whole other story. Uh, other than that, uh, that's going to be keeping me busy, uh, as usual, and... But yeah, I'm going to be trying to spend these last couple of days of my summer as much as I can. On a different note, the Nokia N900, that beautiful, beautiful, awesome, glorious, I'm going to keep listing adjectives, um, Linux... Uh, cell phone that it's it's practically a tablet computer. It's like a Linux desktop desktop computer. Um, I I ordered it and it was going to come in today. And the thing is, it's it's a silly story. It did come in today. But when we ordered it, it was going to an office. And n by the time the UPS or like the the yeah you know the people that drop it off, they got to the the door. There was no one at the office. So what they did is they decided, oh, we need a signature, so let's go bring it to a completely different office and see if anyone's there. So that way they brought it to a new office. I don't know whether the person that was inside that that office, the one that was not ours, had said, okay, yeah, that's fine, I'll hold it for him or something. But now my package is inside their office and I can't get in there because now they're not in their office. So it's kind of a, a kind of a bad thing because I really want the Nokia and I want to play with it so badly and I was so excited. But then all of a sudden, I can't do it today because this this like woman or, or this strange person that I don't even know is holding my phone. She doesn't even know it's a phone, probably. But it's in the it's in the office like across the hall from where uh, some of my family members work. But yeah, that's a big pain because I want to be using the Nokia so so badly. I'm I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm gonna go into I'm gonna get into a lot of Pi game stuff, running running uh, game modules within Python on that because I want to be able to drag stuff around. That stylus on the Nokia N900 is looks that looks really cool. If you haven't heard of the Nokia N900, you should definitely check it out. If you are keeping up with Nokia and that cell phone manufacturer and that like uh, device manufacturer, the Nokia N9, the latest version, is not gonna be coming to America. Or um, later parts in, or like some big parts in Europe. That's a that's a big deal. That is a big story. Um, 
Uh, you can you can read about that in the news if you're like a Linux geek or a really good computer fan. But yeah, because that that's really really disappointing. They might bring it to America eventually, but then it, everyone will be so excited about it. They'll probably like push the price to a thousand dollars, and that's way out of my budget since I'm still just a student. But hey, we'll do what we can. I'm really excited about the Nokia N900, and yeah, that's awesome. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm trying to push more code out there for you. I got Python coming up next. It was interesting to just jump back into Windows and show you this code in Visual Basic script. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more to come. I'm going to get started on some tutorials because I know that's what you people really want to see. And I've got an entirely different channel that I that I want to bring over here. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It'd be cool if you could give me a like, a favorite, subscribe, you know, all that great stuff. But really, thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye.